Hello Internet! Welcome to part 2 of how to make a game like Tic-Tac-Toe in Flash. So, in this video we'll be looking at the coding part of the game. So first I'm gonna go ahead and paste the code and then I'll explain each part of the code one by one. So, so basically I have divided the logic of the game into six steps. If you want you can go ahead and pause the video and read all these steps. So basically the first step is when the game start set the turn for player one and in the code inside the INIT initialize function the first thing I'm doing is setting the turn for player one and in the status text which is this text box I'm writing player one turn so that is the first step in the second step I have to clear all the places and make them clickable. So I'm using a for loop to loop through all the places. The first thing I'm doing is clearing them and then making them clickable. And what this statement is doing is when a place get clicked it's going to go ahead and call the function place clicked which is defined over here so that is the second step clear all the places and make them clickable now step 3 explains about what is happening inside the place clicked function so when a place is clicked first thing we're doing is we're checking if it's player one stone and if it's player one turn, then go ahead and insert the symbol O and set the turn for player two. And if it was player two turn, then just do the opposite thing. So in the code, the first thing we're doing is we're storing the place that was clicked onto the variable temp place. And after after that we're checking if, if it was player one stone. If it was player one stone, then insert symbol O. Symbol can be inserted by <coughs> changing the frame of the place. So if you go inside the symbol place, you can see that we have made three frames. The second frame is actually O and the third frame is actually X. So, if we go to second frame, that means we are actually inserting a symbol O onto the place. And after that, change the turn and write that in the status text. Now, if it was the two's turn, then go ahead and insert an X and set the turn for player 1. So, if a place has been clicked, we know that a symbol has been inserted. So, after so after the symbol has been inserted, we can make the place non-clickable by removing the event listener. So that means now, if the place is clicked, the place click function will not be called. And step four is to check if the game was won after each turn. So inside the place clicked function we are calling check born function. So inside the check born function we are testing if three frames in same row or same column or diagonally has same symbols. If they does have same symbol that means the game was born. So, 
if you check the first condition, we are checking if place 1, place 2 and place 3 has same symbols. That means this, this and this place, if they have same symbols then the game is born. So that is basically the first condition. And if the condition is true, then we are setting a variable called game born as true. And outside that, if game on was set to true by any of these conditions, then we check who won the game by this if else statement. And after that, we are rem removing all event listeners of places and adding a new event listener. And that is a function to restart the game if the user clicks. So, I'll just go ahead and show you how it looks like. So, now the game has been on. So, we print player one, one and click to restart. So, now if I click, the game will restart. So, that is the reason why we add an event listener here. And what if, if the game or game born was not true? So if the game born variable was not true, then we are checking if the game was a draw by calling the function check draw. So here is the definition of the function. Basically the logic is if there is at least a single frame in which a symbol was not inserted, that means the game is not a draw. So that is exactly what we're doing here. If there's at least a single place with frame 1, frame 1 means it has no symbols, then we set a variable called game draw to false. So outside the for loop, we are going to go ahead and check if the game draw was true and if it was true then we are going to print inside the status text that it was a draw and click to restart and just like we did for when the game was born we remove all the event listeners for places and we add an event listener for restart game. And which was actually the sixth step. If the game was won or draw, then print the result and restart the game. So this function over here gets called if the game was draw or if the game was won. So what this function does is call the initialize function, which restarts the game. So this is basically it. I'll put a link to download the code in the description. And if you like the video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already subscribed. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.